What's going on guys, Estas here. Welcome back to another video and we do see a little change of scenery in this video. I'm currently in my car and a funny story, I took my girlfriend to her job interview out in Pennsylvania and I'm in a random part of Pennsylvania right now just sitting in the parking lot and I've just figured I'll record a video while I wait her, you know, wait for her to finish her interview. So here I am recording this video and you know, as you guys read in the title of today's video, I'm just going to go over a quick little trading update what stocks i'm currently watching what positions i took so far today and pretty much just an update to what i've been doing on the trading side of things so for those of you guys that are new to my channel my name is stas and i make videos dealing with swing trading day trading long-term investing and my personal philosophies and strategies when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market so let's hop off the video right off the bat here with the first ticker symbol that i'm watching for this week it's bak and for those of you guys that watched my swing trading scanner video, I actually found this particular stock using that scanner from that video. So I, you know, I ran the scanner, looked at a bunch of different stocks, and I picked out BAK because it fits my personal criteria in terms of my swing trading strategy. And you know, since I called it out and since I've added it to my watch list, BAK has been pushing up in price. We do see the bounce right here on the EMA line and from there you know it's been trending up and it broke the you know it broke this resistance point that it was struggling to get above at about $28 pretty much earlier today and you know starting last week. So for those of you guys that aren't familiar with my personal strategy in terms of swing trading, I like to look for stocks and ETFs that are at good dip buy opportunities but are still in an uptrending pattern. So we do see this stock right here you know, it topped off here at thirty-two dollars. Just just judging off this one hundred and eighty-day chart, and we see it hit lows of about twenty-one dollars. So it took a big dip in price, and from there, instead of it downtrending, meaning it getting rejected by the EMA line, the EMA line acting as a support level as well as the SMA indicators, it started to push up. It broke above the EMA line, and from when it bottomed out at about twenty-one dollars, it started to push up. It started to trend up from here, as we notice, it broke above the EMA line, the EMA line started to point up and then broke above the 50-day SMA indicator. And you know, what we noticed when it broke above the 50-day SMA indicator, we see it pulled back here, right? It, it saw a little pullback and it actually bounced on the EMA line, which, you know, justifies the EMA line being a support level for this stock. So it bounced there. We saw a nice, another healthy little pullback. And what we notice here is that it held above the 50-day SMA indicator with that indicator indicator acting as a support level. So that's a very good indication here that, you know, BAK is going to continue to push up. And what we noticed from there, guys, that's exactly what it ended up doing. It started to push up more nice consolidation here and another little push up now making a higher high. And, you know, I'm going to be watching this one very closely for the rest of this week. Now to quickly talk about run. I actually cut my losses on this particular position. We noticed that it's not really uptrending anymore. It has not confirmed the bounce here at about $14.50. Instead, it got rejected by the EMA line, and now it's pushing down. And maybe we'll see it bounce on the 180-day SMA indicator and get in at a better entry point. But for now, you know, this one is downtrending in price. And, you know, I'm not going to be trend trading this one anymore, you know, until it confirms another bounce point. And let's say it does bounce at the 180. Maybe that would be a better entry point there, and we can ride it back up to the 14 to 15 dollar price point but for now i cut my losses on this stock and i'm going to be waiting for a better entry point so now i'm still in this particular etf i've been holding it for a while now guys it's ticker symbol g-u-s-h and this is a it's an inverse etf for those of you guys that don't know it's inverse is drip and these two etfs they trade based upon uh, XOP, which is an oil and gas based ETF. And pretty much how these ETFs work is whenever XOP is going up in price, Gush is going up in price as well. So they pretty much follow the same chart in terms of, you know, the candlesticks and everything we see here. But whenever XOP is going down in price, Drip is going up in price. So we're going to be playing and I've been playing the, the bull ETF. 
right? Which, you know, goes up in price as XOP is going up in price. And we're going to take a quick little look at that one. And I'm in this one at about $40, been holding for the past week or two. And I'm in with about $1,200. So not too crazy of a position here. And I still see value in this one as a longer term swing trade. And I do plan on swing trading this one through this week. Now to quickly look at why I'm, I'm interested in trading Gush. If we look at the past 20 day, one hour chart, we notice that it's been in this channel right here. Let me clear this drawing set for you guys so we can closely see what I'm talking about. So we see it's been trading in this channel here. You know, and what we notice about this channel is that it's slowly pushing up in price. It's uptrending. The candlesticks are making higher highs and they're making higher lows. It's been very slow growth. It hasn't been like previous channels of this particular stock where we see it was growing at a quicker pace. This one's more, you know, slow, but you can play the ins and outs if that's what you want to do. If you want to day trade this particular ETF, that's very doable with these patterns that we've been seeing in this ETF. But me, I'm a swing trader, so I like to hold it for about a week or two, and that's typically what I do with my swing trades for the most part. So we do see, like I said, it's been uptrending in price very slowly. We see lows of about 35 here. Here again, it dipped below up to about 37. So we do see some lower or some higher low action here. We do see that. So it's very visible in terms of that, right? And what we notice now is that Gush has been consolidating nicely on top of this 50-day SMA indicator. And according to this channel, guys, according to these trend lines, if Gush does end up pushing up here, you know, this channel is, is going to be confirmed again. It hasn't broken the channel. So what we're looking for in particular is that this starts to push up here into the 40s, into the 41s for it to just pretty much continue the pattern that it's currently on. And, you know, it's already up 5% today. It's been consolidating nicely for for the lat, for most of this day so far. So it is looking good in terms of gush consolidating here and starting to slowly push up, you know, up to the 41s, maybe 4150 again like it did last week or possibly even to the 42s. So that's why I see potential in gush again. It's at a good dip by opportunity in my personal opinion and you know, I like looking for stocks and ETFs that are at good buy opportunities to trade and that's what I do. So that is what I'm looking at in terms of gush. So now to quickly talk about Facebook, this is the one that I've actually put money into today. I bought four shares of Facebook at about $170 and judging off of the one or the, let's look at the 20 day, one hour chart for Facebook. So we obviously know it dipped 20% from about 220 down to about lows of uh, 175 initially, right? That was a nice 20% dip in Facebook, but now we see it's trading in the 160s now, guys. So, you know, Facebook is still downtrending in price. We do see the EMA line pushing the price down, meaning it's acting as a resistance point. So, you know, I'm just slowly looking to put money into Facebook at, you know, the buy points and buy ranges that I I personally deem as good prices to buy the stock. So 170 was the first buy point where I thought was a good time to, you know, start a position. You know, we were at the 175s. I was going to take a position there, but then we still slowly started to see this morning in particular that it started to go down into the 170s. So I was like, okay, 170, that's a good buying opportunity in my personal opinion. So I bought four shares at about 170. I posted the screenshot on my Instagram, link down below in the description if you guys want to follow me there. And now, you know, I'm just going to further buy shares as Facebook trends down to the 160s. And if it trends down to the 150s, you know I'm going to be buying shares, especially in the $150, you know, price point range. So, you know, right now in with about $700, nothing crazy, slowly looking to add more shares into this particular position. And judging from the further charts of Facebook, we do see that this is the perfect stock for my particular criteria. Facebook, very good company, makes a, a ton of money, right? And it's at a dip by opportunity, but it's still uptrending over time. Over this three year, one week chart, we notice it's uptrending over time. We don't really see any crazy, crazy downtrending patterns for Facebook. But what we do notice is that it's corrected itself a bunch of times. And you know, from that, from those corrections, it's always bounced up to make a higher high. We notice it here, boom, 
here, you know, it consolidated here and pushed back up to another higher high. We saw the bigger correction uh, a couple months back when it went back to the 150s. That was obviously a very big, very big dip in the stock, and that could have been viewed as a good buying opportunity. But again, I personally missed out on that buying opportunity, which led to me taking a position here because I can't miss out on two buying opportunities on Facebook. So, you know, pretty much a dip there pulled back up to another higher high and now i see this as another buying opportunity for facebook and that's why i'm slowly going to be adding more shares into this position so i hope you guys enjoyed this video these are the couple stocks that i'm watching for this week gush facebook ticker symbol r-u-n as well as uh what's the other one b-a-k so those are the three stocks or four stocks that I'm watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys found some value in it, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter down below in my description box. Both of those places I post my profits, updates to the channel, you know, you know, trades I'm taking throughout the day, stock news, stocks I'm watching, and I'm just a bunch of random stuff on those platforms. I would love to talk to you guys. Shoot me DMs, and you know, we can just get to know each other and talk more about the stock market. That's what we all love and enjoy, right? And again, make sure to do your own research when it comes down to investing and trading in the stock market. Do not buy or sell based off of my opinion or anybody else's opinion out there. Because the whole goal of this channel and your 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 goals should be focused around becoming a self-sufficient trader slash investor so you can become self-sufficient over time, guys. That's the whole point, you know, that I'm trying to, you know, ingrain in your guys' heads. So that's what I'm doing today, guys. Hope you guys found value in this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.